Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to another episode. Today I'm back at Blueprint. We're renovating because the engine room needed some work and uh, we needed some added tools and whatnot. So work has stopped, so I figured that I'd come by, uh, make a video while I can before the, you know, people get their Christmas bonuses and gifts and start doing work on their car. So uh, today's episode, we have more parts for the silver, uh, Quicksilver project. And I want to show you guys what I'm doing for fuel and ignition. Um, so let's take a look. Oh, update on the motor. So pretty much put it together. Put the cams in. You remember this, these are uh, Kelfo 288s. I'm not using the S3s just for testing. I'm using previous owner's valve cover, which is awesome. I love this color, Jason. Thank you. We put everything together. Uh, one of the things I want to note is we're using the uh, English Racing's um, underdrive pulley for the oil pump. So I'm probably gonna rev this to nine, nine and a half. So I don't wanna use a sump pump because most people will not <clears throat> use the dry sump. So I wanted to keep um, the fuel pressure, I'm sorry, oil pressure, um, you know, in, in range without damaging the overworking the oil pump. So a couple of mods that I had to do, the oil pump uh, uh, pulley sits here. So what it is, is instead of whatever the normal size, it's larger. And it gets, there's a little stub here that you have to grind down. If you are using the um, stock manifold, you have to make a space right here. Otherwise the oil pump pulley uh, <clears throat> kind of hits this spot. So those are a couple of mods that I had to make to use the underdrive uh, oil pump pulley. So the cams are in. Let me see if I can show you. I took a few pictures, but these are good. Um, again, uh, we're not going with S3s just for this purpose. Um, I am going with Calfor 288s. So only thing left to do is put the timing on, put everything else on, and we're good to go. So um, parts, 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 parts. I am not using electrical pump, although there is one uh, Wobble 450 in the back that's going to be feeding our surge tank. So I go ahead and use the Christmas sale that they had and I purchased a uh, Iridium external pump surge tank. Okay. It's a beautiful piece. Um, it has 10 AN feed for the external pump, which I'm using, and it has three ports for in and out. So I'm gonna go a little bit deeper on how to set up a um, surge tank for your car. But for my main pump, main fuel delivery, I am using the Magnus mechanical pump, cam driven. There's two versions of this, the mechanical pump. One is belt driven, which attaches to I think the um, AC right here, and it's belt driven. So the reason why you wanna go with mechanical, first of all, there's an electric components to it. It's very, very efficient. It's, it'll handle like 1,500, 2,000 horsepower just on one pump. So basically on, on, on the cam driven thing, same thing, there's no belt. I don't wanna you know, risk running a, uh, into a belt issue and mid wide open throttle if it snaps. So what basically happens is this sits here and this cam, when it spins, it spins the, the pump and which basically delivers the fuel to the rail. Okay, this is the pump that goes on here and it goes on the car. Now, <clears throat> major differences between that, uh, obviously mechanical versus electric, the reason why I didn't want to go with electric is because they're not reliable, I think. Um, they will fail. I don't think two pumps, the dual system, is enough 
uh, to cover, um, to, to handle the 1,000 plus horsepower. And I mean, it might for the dyno, but not on the street over long term. It takes a lot of strain on the uh, motor itself. I'm sorry, the, uh, field, the, the electric system itself. So if you go with two pumps, you know, tuners want to overshoot the field delivery. So you want more than two. Uh, then that increases the, um, the pressure, the uh, load on the electrical system. Each pump, I think, is like 10 to 16 amps each. Um, and you have four of them going, you know, that's, that's a lot of weight. Um, so especially uh, if you're running a catch, I'm sorry, a surge tank. Surge tank itself, the radium has built-in fuel pumps. You could do that as well, and that's really, really good too. So if you run one pump in the, cat, in the uh, main tank, run a line to the surge tank. So that pump feeds this and just fills this up. It's like two liters or three liters and the two pumps inside feeds the rail, um, which is more than enough for a thousand horsepower. But I decided, I did the cost analysis, I did everything. I decided to go with the, I really got a good deal from someone and I, the mechanical pump. So the way I'm gonna set this up is, there's gonna be a single 450 in the back, feeding this in the front. And the reason why a lot of people do do that, which is, just connect that to this, I'm sorry, just connect that to the, um, your main fuel tank in the back. The reason why I didn't want to do it, because I know from experience that these don't like to pick up fuel, literally like pick fuel up. These are more like a delivery system. So it, it, they require the fuel to be at its port and then it just pushes the fuel in into the rail. Um, and it's very good at that. It's very good at, you know, uh, putting the actual flow into the, the, the rail versus picking it up. So it does need that help. So the 1450 is going to feed this, it's going to fill it up, and then uh, 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 10 a.m. is going to be running from here to that pump at the, um, at the cams. And then uh, from the exit of, I'm sorry, from the return of the rail, it's going to go back to this catch can and the other return from the, from the tank. So it, this thing will always be full because the pump in the tank, the 450 is filling it up and the return from uh, the rail is going to be filling that up too. So this will always be filled. It's not gonna be starved. There's no cavitation where you have two pumps in line and it picks up air and there's a gap of fuel and you, know, you inject or starve. So I think this is a real good system. Everybody should, with the high horsepower, should be running a surge tank, I think, unless you got like a fuel cell and you got the whole thing set up. So that's gonna be my fuel system. It will hold, I've done it before. It's a really good system and it's good for daily drive too. What I'm going to use for my ignition system, however, um, is not a CDI this time. So I know it's not pretty. I'm sorry I did this at home, but um, this is IGN1A coils. They're LS coils as they're known. So to give you an idea of how good they are, um, a regular, you know, the, the coil and plug waste uh, spark system, which is one coil per two cylinder that our DSMs and EVOs run on, um, typically has around 24 megajoules or 20 megajoules of spark, and that's good enough for 700 horses. You upgrade to a COP system like Toyotas and whatnot, they go for 24 to 25 megajoules per, I'm sorry, megajoules per coil. So um, that's good enough for 800 horses. And then you have the GTR coils, and you know people have hit over 1,000 horsepower on those. Those goes for 50 but these go for 105 megajoules, which is more than enough for our application. I think more than enough for 1,200, 1,300 horses, but it has to be that much power uh, can be gotten from these um, if you put them in series. So if you do a waste spark, which is, you know, one and four lights up at the same time, one on, in, uh, comp uh, one on um, 
compression or power stroke. The other one on exhaust simultaneously goes off and the middle two go off. So they're literally igniting twice. They don't have enough time to add higher RPMs to really, you know, uh, charge up and give you a you know, really high spark. So if you do them in series, they're only going off once um, per four strokes. So they have enough time to get you that energy. Uh, for our stock ECU, however, unfortunately, you cannot um, do series. So you're stuck with wastegate, but I am an aftermarket ECU, so I did put a plug in to go in between um, series and, and uh, waste, waste uh, spark. So we should be good on that. So also, um, one of the things about these is um, they're very reliable. Um, everyone that I've known that uses them um, really likes them. This is the first time I'm using it. And they're very reliable. And by the way, whale in tune, thank you. Um, basically, I bought the plates from them. Very easy, uh, thick, and it's you know powder coated. So thank you, John, uh, for that. This is the ignition um, that I'm going to use, and this can be used with stock um, ECU as as it is. So one of the other things that um, to note about this uh, ignition system is it requires a lot of um, grounds. So wiring wise, it's pretty similar to the COP that you would normally use, like you know spooling up or whatnot, but it requires three grounds. One is to the head, same ground that the spark, the plugs are uh, uh, grounded to. So somewhere on the head, usually the, the cam seal, I'm sorry, the cam uh, sensor here. Um, the other one, ground to the battery directly. Uh, and the third one is from the ECU itself. So it requires three grounds to get all that, you know, energy out properly. So that's the ignition system that I'm going to be using. There's a whole bunch of other stuff. I recently just got the wastegate, so I'm sending it to the turbo um, fabricator. Um, so I am very big on using our local businesses for everything. There's a few reasons for that. One, the money that you use for your local businesses that you spend over there usually goes back into your um, local economic ecology. So, you know, that guy's gonna go spend somewhere else, he's gonna buy stuff, living in general. It stays within the circle. This is one of the main reasons why. And second reason is, you know, if you don't use people in your own state, there's gonna be no name, there's gonna be no What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, excitement. There's no production. There's no, uh, you know, forwarding the, the knowledge and achievement for that state. It's very important to do that. So all for local guys, you know. Um, so I am using uh, Matt for Morrison Fabrications. Big shout out. Very nice guy. He does awesome work. Um, and he's very, very responsive. So that's the other thing I like about him. When the kit gets here, I will give you guys a clean look on exactly what he did, what I went with the turbo and everything. So, <clears throat> so that's, oh yeah, uh, I'm a little ashamed of this, okay? So don't, don't uh, <laughs> judge me. So you remember that episode where I got the wheels on impulse and basically it didn't fit? So one of my friends, uh, the other Evo X that we're building for, a uh, thousand horsepower. He saw them and he liked them. I since then got new wheels, but it's on his car now. And it fits perfectly. He needed them anyway. Um, let me just show you what it looks like. All right, so these are without spacers. That's what the spacer that does it doesn't need. And look, it looks like a beast. So he's keeping them and I got new wheels and I'll show you guys what that is later on. Um, I've recently gotten a few requests on Facebook to do a video on speed density versus MAF on these cars or cars in general. Uh, let me know if you guys are interested, if more people, you know, if I get a lot of votes on certain topics, I'll do a intensive video on it. So good enough for you to start messing with it yourself. Oh, next week. 
this thing. So I'm tuning another Mazda. Uh, it's been four months since I tuned one. This is built. Uh, I'll do a tuning video on this. We're using Cobb Access Port to do it. Um, so more to come on that. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in again. Leave me a message. Anything you guys want to know, anything I can answer or um, when I ask questions and I do, maybe not on the YouTube videos, but sometimes I do on the forums. Don't just throw nonsense at people. These people, whoever is asking is typically hurt and they've, you know, tried their best. And, you know, I understand some questions like what grade oil? Okay, now the, the, go bash the guy. But if the person's having trouble with their car, if you don't want to help, don't say anything. But just think about what they're going through. You, everybody who's watching this knows what it's like to have a really, really loved car and basically it doesn't work or you put all that work into it and you want that help. So, you know, help each other out. Thank you for watching and happy new year, Merry Christmas, whatever's coming up. Take care.